Hey everybody, Ben Delaney here. I want to tell you about a great gravel ride I had recently in my old hometown of Albuquerque, New Mexico. I want to do this for two reasons. One, to brag on New Mexico, you know, hometown, home state pride. Uh, and two, to brag on how gravel bike technology has made rides possible, or at least a whole heck of a lot more enjoyable uh, than what the options that we had, or that I had uh, years ago when I lived there. My two guides who made the ride possible were Robbie Duangpanya of Hi-Fi Wheels and Mark Basilier of Linderettes. Now, again, I grew up in Albuquerque, rode a gajillion miles there, thought I knew every square inch of the place, uh, but Robbie and Mark showed me, oh no, you do not, uh, taking me in two spots. One, the Albuquerque Bosque, which is the wooded area right along the Rio Grande, the main river there through Albuquerque, and then up into Corrales where we rode along the Acequias, which is a community ditches that uh, farmers use to share the precious resource of water. Turns out those make for great routes for gravel bikes uh, because they wind through quiet beautiful places. There's narrow dirt paths sometimes on both sides, sometimes just on one side and it's pretty much uninterrupted because the water's got to get through. Now you could have done this years ago on a mountain bike. I'm sure some of my mountain bike friends are watching this saying, yeah, duh, where have you been? These have been here for literally generations. Uh, but on a road bike, not ideal. Not just for the bumpiness, but for the curse of Albuquerque riding, which is goat heads. Uh, goat head is a uh, thorn that grows like weeds because it is a weed and especially in the fall when the weeds dry out the things are friggin everywhere. When I lived in Albuquerque we had a couple solutions that didn't work very well. One was a Mr. Tuffy Strips, a plastic liner that you would tuck inside your tire uh, and the other was the system where we would cut the beads off of clinchers and then tuck those old tires inside a new tire uh, effectively doubling the tire thickness. It felt like garbage, but at least you weren't getting a flat every five to 10 minutes on a group ride. So these darned goat heads uh, kept me and others largely off some of these fun foot passing trails in the Bosque and the Asikias, again, I didn't even really know about. So uh, being able to go back and see with fresh eyes uh, my old hometown and stop never once for a flat uh, was was a wonderful experience. So thanks Robbie and Mark uh, for showing me uh, these great spots. Another cool thing about gravel bikes was that you know it's this tweener uh, experience, right? You can cover the distance pretty easily and efficiently like you would on a road bike, but it's a little bit burlier uh, in the direction of a mountain bike. So after doing the, the Bosque Loop and the Corrales Asequia, hooked up with my buddy Tim, we did we did some road miles as well. So sure, could, you could do this on a mountain bike, but it wouldn't be as efficient or as fun. And you could arguably do it on a road bike now with tubeless tires, but uh, it would probably be a little sketchy, at least on some of these corners, the sandy corners in the Bosque or, or on the Asequias. Bottom line, I love riding bikes in New Mexico, always have, and was thrilled at the opportunity to have some new friends show me some new to me routes. Uh, in some very old places in this beautiful state. Thanks, Gravel Bikes, and thanks, Robbie and Mark.